Hello, brothers and sisters. This is the Remnant Warrior, and you are now listening to Buy Their Fruits on the Kingdom Productions Network. I've heard so many sermons and I've even been guilty of preaching sermons that are telling people the wrong thing about the armor of God. It is literally a lifestyle. Uh, You know, (laughs) the shield of faith is something you have if you are walking in faith, if you have faith and faith is not something that occurs in your mind it's not a belief that happens in your mind you know i can believe or say i believe all day long in jesus but if my actions don't show that i believe in him then it's nothing more than a thought you know um I, the, the best example that I can give on short is like my son has when he was younger he would dive off the top bunk of his bunk bed and I wouldn't even know he was going to do it but he just knew dad would catch him you know that's that's faith and that's a childlike faith and that's what we're called to have and it's the same with every other part of the armor and our weapon which is the sword if you are not in the word studying the word and using the word yeah yeah, then you don't have the sword of the spirit and it's the same with every piece of armor It's literally a lifestyle. And it can actually, every bit of Ephesians 6 correlates perfectly with the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. I mean, a lot of of people are, a lot of people are afraid to use the sword. They're afraid to use the word. And if you're just leaving it sheathed and you're not spreading it, if you're not using it to reprove and correct, if you're not using it to convict, um, you know, if God and the Holy Spirit is not prompting you to, to do these things. And I understand, you know, Christians who are, are who are on the milk, you know, kind of they're kind of in infancy in their faith. Yes, they could be overzealous sometimes and they can be the ones that are out there, you know, passing out gospel tracts and winning souls for the Lord. But there are also some fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, myself included, when we first became born again. We were kind of meek in that we were like, well, should we spread the, you know, like, you know, we don't want to step on anybody's toes. We don't, you know, but yeah. eventually you outgrow that. I've outgrown that. I mean, I'm, you know, bold. Um, I fall short sometimes. We all do. But it went from me. I don't want to offend anybody to me going, well, this is God's word and I'm going to use this sword, you know, no matter, you know, you know, you know, the, the cost, you know, sometimes and. And, uh, you know, we're not supposed to hit somebody directly over the head with the word. You know, we're supposed to, you know, this Holy Spirit is supposed to prompt us. How hard do we use this, the sword of truth on somebody? And some people we could, you know, we might need to be very blunt and forthcoming to them. For some people, we might need to be less blunt, more, you know, as James would say, slow to anger, quick to listen, you know, slow to speak. Uh, you know, and I'm not going to say that sometimes there haven't been times where I've been a little bit too harsh. I've been a little bit too overzealous. I and, sometimes, well. and sometimes it can yeah. happen. And I'm sorry, that's my personality. Uh, you know, but that being said, though, hopefully, you know, God has tempered me. And God will continue to temper me. And so, you know, when we're trying to reach the lost, you know, when we're trying to win souls for the Lord, you know, it, you know, there's, we have to realize that, you know, sometimes, you know, being harsh to somebody though we might be doing it lovingly because we want them to become bored again 
may not be the best mechanism of the way of doing it for everybody. And also, there's some people that you need to be harsh with. There's some people that that's the only way that they do come to the truth is hitting rock bottom or getting hard knocked upside the head. That's how that's it is. That's why sometimes. we're supposed to do all things through prayer and supplication, you know, um, even, you know, uh, uh, sharing the gospel with people, you know, pray about the best way to do it. Ask the Holy Spirit to, you know, speak through you, guide you, you know, give you mm -hmm. the words to say. For example, if someone's in the LGBTQT plus community, for example, though, if anybody asks, you know, well, what does the Bible say? I say, we'll read Romans 1. <laughs> that's, what the, I mean, that's what God says about it. But that being said, though, um, you know, you might not want to constantly harp on, you know, homosexuality being a sin. Also, you know, be stern. I'm not saying that you bulk anywhere. I'm not saying that, okay? But if you're constantly hitting them over the head with it, and that is all you are saying to them, Instead of, you know, preaching the gospel to them, that could shut them off. Go completely Absolutely. shut somebody off. I think um, Wayne said it best earlier. Um, it's our job to plant the seeds. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so share the gospel with them so they can come to Christ and then let jesus and the holy spirit change them yeah if they are truly born again then they will be a new creature and they'll know that homosexuality is wrong or abortion is and, wrong or alcoholism yeah. or insert you know grievous sin that someone falls into yeah. you know the holy spirit will convict them on that that's right um, and you know like you like i guess the parable of the so a sower our job through the Great Commission that Jesus Christ has commanded us to do is just preach the gospel. It's just preach the word right. and get it out there. That's what the Holy Spirit, you know, does through us and what God does. And it's the grace that he shows the world is by us preaching the word. Um, and, you know, and, and we're not supposed to, again, like, you know, like once you plant the seed, you know, not dump a ton of fertilizer on it or, or, or something that could, you know, necessarily turn a person off which can happen you know because then you know, ultimately it lies within that person right but then you're kind of like okay so I, I i probably messed up here <laughs> you know i probably committed a sin against god in that way uh you know by you know going too far and there have been times in our lives of people that we love that we're probably most guilty with doing this of people that we really earnestly want to become saved uh but sometimes through uh us being overzealous um that can end up happening where you can turn them off sadly and you have to come back later and you know and, and try to, to to discuss things with them again you know and it's ultimately it's up to god you know ultimately yeah. it's you know the the, the person has to have faith as well you know too um but you know it's tough because all of us here i know i know wayne and i when we're speaking to people who practice the occult when we're speaking to pra people who practice witchcraft when we're sp speaking to people who uh, practice new age beliefs and new thought beliefs and stuff like that and everything which is primarily what wayne and i do um, not to say that you don't do it, Jeremy. You do too as well, but it's it's primarily something that we focus on. Yeah, especially well, you guys definitely talk to you know people actually what you know one on one way more than I do. I can only think of a handful of times that I've spoken to someone in the occult one on one. You know, I, I do podcast episodes and make videos, but as far as one on one, maybe a handful of times. So, yeah, that's that's definitely something y'all know more about. And we have to realize, too, I guess one thing I want to talk to you, you Wayne, about this and ask you is, and my friend Jesse Spots talks about this a lot. Like, I, Jesse's a dear brother in Christ to me, a dear friend to me. We have discussions about this also with my, my friend Shane Levesque, who's also a fellow brother in Christ. We're trying to reach the lost people that are into the occult. Some go as far as, you know, directly worshiping Satan. You know, some 
are worshiping themselves, but are also worshiping Satan too, whether they realize or not, if they're a quote unquote light worker like I used to be. Okay. But when we're trying to reach these people, you know, so many people just want to automatically condemn them and cut them off. And I'm not saying that we, we I'm not saying that, you know, you quote unquote build bridges with them per se and justify any wickedness that they're doing. I'm not saying that. But we have to, within love and within, you know, you know, within the Holy Spirit working through us and God working through us, try to reach these people without shutting them off. Because, you know, if we go to them and we're pointing fingers, I can, you know, how can I point a finger at a new ager when I was a new ager and was yeah. rebellious against God in and of myself? You know, how can I sit there and say, how dare you be this way? But that was my, I was that way five years ago. Uh, you know, the fact that they should see Jesus in us in everything we do you know they they should we should be witnessing to them without even opening our mouths and if we you know come to them in any way other than Christ would then I don't think it's going to be received no and I'm, I'm definitely listening you know because I, I want to hear John you know this uh, some of the listeners may, uh, the Remnant Report listeners definitely do. You know, I have a son into that. You know, he's an adult. Um, he's far from Christian. He's into the occult, and it breaks my heart. And I, I, I look for different ways to talk to him. Um, you know, he. He believes that, not necessarily that God isn't God and that Jesus isn't who he says he is, but that he's not the only way. Yeah, you universalism. Know, that, exactly. So, so Wayne, and I know that you interact with a lot of the New Age community, and we both have friends who are still sadly stuck in the New Age too as well, and people that we love. Um, can you give some advice to uh, our listeners who are fellow brothers and sisters in Christ of how we can minister to people uh, who are still trapped into the trapped in the occult, who are still trapped in new age or new thought type thinking and bring them to the objective truth, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Oh, it is a tough egg to crack for sure. And that's the whole point with all of it. Because a lot of times people are just seeking teachers that will please their itching ears as the Bible does inform us. Yes. And oftentimes the things that these secret societies, these occult organizations and stuff offer people is exactly what they want to hear. Oh, well, you don't have to follow any particular set of moral values or anything like that. It doesn't matter. There's many ways to get to God. And this is kind of the whole thing that they teach. And they, they even go a step further in a lot of these occult fraternities. They teach that you can be God, that you are a microcosm of God. You're a mini God. You're a fractal portion of God. That God is the universal one, the one, the source, the original uh, creative motive that put this in, together, this whole cosmos together. And you are a small part of that. And you are this microcosm of the macrocosm. So essentially you are God. And this is what they teach in a lot of the teachings. So when you have people looking at those ideas, well, they click some boxes with them because then it becomes more focused on the self and it comes a type of self worship. That's what it becomes. And they don't realize that. And that's even within their own language. Think about what they espouse. Well, I'm going to, uh, you know, commune with my higher self, self. Think about that. It's in their own language yeah. that they use. They, they uh, will communicate with their own holy guardian angels and things like this. Or So they claim, and that's also a version of their higher self when you get high enough in the teachings of the occult orders. This is what Aleister Crowley was speaking of when he was talking to this this entity he called Ewas. This was his higher self, allegedly. 
whom he channeled the Book of the Law through. And we have this whole dichotomy of thought that arises with that. So it becomes self-centric. And if it's self-centric, it's not of a God. Yeah. That's the thing, because essentially, at the end of the day, what all of these occult fraternities or mystical teachings, occult practices, whatever it is they teach, it will be the absolute inversion of what natural law is. It'll be the inversion of nature. And that's why you arrive at things like LGBTQ plus and whatever they want to call it, how many ever other letters they want to add to it. It's not natural. And the ends thereof are always death. There's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the ends thereof are death. I probably butchered that quote, but you get the idea. <laughs> I See, I do know scripture, but I can't. Uh, necessarily quote it verbatim most of the time when I'm trying to speak like this, but uh, uh, the whole point here is we're told certain things in the Bible that contradict things that they're taught in the occult. So when you could go ahead and point out these things that they teach and they believe in the occult, and here's the big key. Here's the big key. These people that are stuck with these occult teachings and stuff like that, they got their minds stuck on that. They don't even know what they believe. Oftentimes you have to tell them what they believe by pointing to the source material. That's exactly what I do. Here's what you believe. This is what this organization you belong to teaches. This is what you believe. Yeah. And then you point out the dichotomy of thought with that and how it doesn't align with the principles of reason that they, they hold in high esteem there yeah. or with what God says. And yep. you present Jesus to them. And a lot of these occult fraternities and mystical secret societies and stuff, they try to adopt Jesus into the fold as one of their ascended masters. The master Jesus. Yeah, and they try to fit him in and mold him in the Christ. They call him the Christ, like, you know, as if it's a title or something like that. It's, and it's, it's different an, from Jesus, the Jesus Christ, Christ within the Bible, the Son of God, when you right. compare to what their master Jesus says, oh, or, yeah. even the, or even the new... AI chat Jesus, which yeah. again, that's utter uh, technological blasphemy, huh, Wayne? It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't equate. It doesn't equate to what Jesus truly said. It reminds see, me of the image of the beast. Yeah, yeah. When these secret societies are talking about Christ, they're talking about something entirely different than you and I are talking about, and that's the whole point here. They don't even understand what it is that they espouse. They just throw Jesus in there and they throw Christ in there to lead people astray. That's what it's about because they're not talking about the same thing. They just grabbed the term to maybe suck people in that aren't very familiar with the Bible, but maybe have some Christian predispositions to them. And that's how they, they get people on the hook. Oh, well, this, this must be true. This sounds very good. It sounds very correct. Sounds very logical. And by the way, they they worship Jesus at the in the lodge. No, they don't. I assure no, they you, don't. The they don't worship the Son of God. No, 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 no. It's the only prerequisite to becoming a Mason is you have to believe in a God. You don't have to designate which one. Uh, but uh, they'll they'll insert that for you later on. They'll, they'll lead you to the great architect of the universe. Uh, but that's that's another story altogether. Which is a which fancy. also I have to put this in. The Masons' credit from what I've read and what I've studied, John Calvin with coming for coming up with the phrase "the great architect of the universe." By the way, uh, it doesn't so, surprise me a bit. So, uh, uh, teachers and stuff who have been Freemasons too, like Billy, Billy Graham and uh, a lot of other ones. Uh, no, so, Norman Vincent Peale, Trump's mentor and pastor. Um, oh yeah, there's infiltration it, everywhere. Oh it's, yeah. Oh, and there's yeah. a few nations that sit on church boards and stuff, too. So you have to be mindful. You can't serve two masters. We're, we're warned this. That's right. If you're, if you're serving some other master, you've taken blood oaths, swearing fealty to the, the lodge, fealty to the lodge, you're not serving Jesus. You're not serving the Lord. You're serving some other Lord. And you know who it is they revere in the lodge? Well, they don't tell you till you hit the 30th degree, but it is Lucifer. That's and, right. So uh, Albert Pike will tell you. What's that? I said Albert Pike will tell you. Absolutely, and that's yeah. the thing. They, th this is what gets me. Is all right, and this is what I was was the point I was hitting on. Most of the time, the people that get involved with this stuff, they don't even know what it is they believe or they belong to, and that's they don't where, read their own material. 
right. That's oftentimes where maybe you'll get them to change their mind or think about things. That's where you could plant the seed. They don't know. They don't know because they haven't done the footwork. They haven't really read into it. And oftentimes they get involved with this thing with good intentions, like I said, because let's face it. I mean, let's put let's look at the public face of the Freemasons. OK, yeah. or more specifically, we'll go we'll go the Shriners. That's a step higher in the Freemasonic order. What do they do? Well, they build children's hospitals and they put on circuses and they do spaghetti dinners. And, you know, they're wonderful people. They're they're upstanding citizens and businessmen in the community. Well, there's more behind the Shriners than that. I actually oh, yes. have done on the Shriners yep. specifically, yep. reading directly from their own manuals. So uh, okay. it's pretty concerning stuff that goes on behind the scenes with the a lot. Ancient Order of the Mystic Shrine. Yep. They, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're they're not they're not a Christian organization. No, 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 no. Because again, you have to swear an oath, right? And it's the same with. Um, well, to be a Shriner, you have to swear at least thirty-two oaths. What's the, what's oh the, yes? What's the Catholic organization? The Jesuits. Well, yes, but there's a fraternal brotherhood within the Catholics as uh, well, too. You're, you're, you're talking about, um, oh man. Hold on, let me look. I can't believe I'm... Uh, I'm... I'm thinking Jesuits all day long because that's essentially... Well, yeah, but there's, yeah, a, right. there's a there's a specific fraternal order within the Catholics that's very famous, and I can't believe I'm drawing a... Knights of Columbus. Well, Knights of not... Columbus. Okay, there you there go. You go. Uh, Knights of Malta. The Knights yes, of Malta is what I was of, thinking about. The Knights of Columbus, as far as we're talking about fraternal orders, which the Knights of Malta, they are too as well. Uh, but that's the one I was thinking of. But they're but they're 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 swe swearing oaths, you know, not to God, but to uh, various uh, demons as well, too, right? You know, and so it's just how anybody can think. It just blows my mind. Like you were talking, Jeremy. Like I grew up listening to talk radio when I was in high school too, as well. Like you can look at my yearbook, and people thought I would have been a state senator by now. And oh, praise God, I'm not, because here. I'd be a member of the Council for National Policy. And I would, you know, probably I would not be a born again Christian uh, and I'd probably be defending Donald Trump right now in the Great Awakening. Uh, you know, like that's where I would have been. OK, and so I, I, I'm glad through all the trials and tribulations I've went through that that's, you know, this was hopefully I can say, hopefully without putting, you know, words in God's mouth, you know, this is where God wants me to be. I, I hope so anyway. Um, and so, you know, it's just to see like the patriotism and people who claim to be Christians, but joining fraternal organizations. And like when you're reading the word, and you're in the word, like it's plain as day that we're not supposed to join any fraternal organizations, nor are we supposed to swear allegiances to the country. Above that Above all things, my brothers, swear no oaths. Yes. Because above all things, I mean, that's a that's as bold a statement as you can make. Yes, and the thing is, is it's not that just because I don't say the Pledge of Allegiance, okay, and just because I um, try to curb patriotism as much as I possibly can because I don't want it to turn into an idol, and I don't vote as well too, okay, but just because I don't do these things. Uh, does not mean that I don't, you know, care about the citizens of my country or my neighbors around me. Yeah, I do because I'm commanded to do so Absolutely. in the second law of Christ. <laughs> yeah, I you know? love so. the people, but, you know, it, there is a huge difference between the people in the country and the government of the country you know the bible's very clear that that there are principalities behind every nation in this world and this you know satan is the god of this world mm -hmm. so we are to love the people and look i am as patriotic as they come 
my kingdom's just not of this world. <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, and a lot of people get upset about, you know, about the thing is, is it doesn't matter if you're right on the left. Satan's going to have you trapped in wanting to maintain what you have in this world or whether for you to get more. We have to remember, America per capita has the largest prison population of any country in the world, okay? The illusion of freedom that we have or liberty that we have in this country is nothing but an illusion, okay? And the thing is, is again, to call it liberty, right? Our, our, our liberties, our, our God-giving rights, but Lucifer brings liberty. Jesus and God bring freedom, freedom from sin and death, the bondage of sin and death through our faith, okay? And so people have to realize, and it's hard, because I used to be neoconservative. I love the founding fathers. Like, why do you think it doesn't matter if it's Alice Bailey or Barbara Marks Hubbard, the right or the left, they both worship the founding fathers. All of the theosophical writers that I've ever read, you now maybe Wayne, maybe you've come across one that I haven't, they all honor the founding fathers. They all honor the grand uh, Atlantean experiment known as the United States of America. Unless yeah. I'm missing something, I yeah, have not come Thomas across Payne. one that doesn't. Yeah. I mean, I understand you could say the Russian occultists, maybe they don't. From a Dugan, Alexander Dugan standpoint, I'm not arguing that. I told the American theosophists, they do. Uh, and so they idolize this country. And I don't, I mean, I know you guys are getting it. The amount of pushback that you just say, I am a Christian first, American citizen second, uh, from Christians is insane. It's insane because they've been well, indoctrinated to love the country. And closer to it being illegal. I mean, I, I didn't I honestly didn't think I would live to see it, but I honestly now don't see how. I mean, unless the Lord is ready for me to leave this world, you know, soon. If I live a full life, I don't see how I won't see it because it's already <laughs> happening and has been happening in other parts of the world. Um, you know, dispensationalists and Christian Zionists are so pro Israel, but Israel is one of the most dangerous countries in the world to be a Christian. Yeah, and it's illegal. Um, but it's getting closer and closer to being illegal in America, and you know I think that's one of the things that the patriotic uh, Christians don't understand and are very deceived about. They believe that Donald Trump is going to change that. Um, <laughs> even if it does change for a time, um, we are always supposed to be very weary anytime someone comes crying peace and safety. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, well, the fact is people just don't read their Bibles. That's no. what it boils down to. No. Yeah, that's the sad state of affairs. People don't know the Bible, especially this younger generation. Many of them have been brought up without any kind of Bible pretext Yep. or any kind of biblical foundation. They don't understand. They don't know what is written in the book of Revelation. They don't know what's there. I mean, it's laid out. <laughs> Even uh, Matthew chapter 24, I, I love Matthew chapter 24. Jesus, with the Sermon on the Mount, tells it exactly how it is, how it's coming down the pike here. It's going to happen. It's a blueprint. You could look at it. You can know what season we're in by the fruit that we see, by the tree. Look at the fig tree. When you see that the, the, the buds are ripe on it, you know summer is nigh. And that's yes. where we're at. I mean, we see it. 
it's 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 unbelievable just the amount that has lined up with scripture at this point especially over the course of the past three years now and people are still absolutely blind to it it's unfolding before your eyes it was written yeah. on the it's right faster there. and it's faster still, yeah. that's it's a delusion it's the grand illusion that god's getting even the very elect could be deceived, Wayne. We're we're seeing it right now. We're yeah. and I mean, and, and people are always wondering. You know, I, my friend Jesse, I guess bring him up real quick. Another time is he used to when he was an atheist. He used to say, "Well, if it's right here in Revelation, then if we know exactly what's going to happen, then it could be stopped, right?" But we're literally seeing people just disregarding and scoffing at it, and I mean in droves people are just like don't they don't even care like it's happening we're seeing the great apostasy the grand rebellion right in front of our eyes probably happening okay and it's happening right now we're we're, we're witnessing it and you know and it's it's a sight to behold um and i guess you know one final question i, I have for you wayne and you can tell everybody uh you know where they can find your excellent work and definitely thank you for coming on we'll have you again on by their fruits brother is, and um, I'll put all that info in the uh, description as well. Yes. And so my, my final question to you is, is, is with, with all this is, do you see with everything building to this um, transhumanist, you know, B system where you know we're going to see the heartlet fall which i believe is jerusalem and we're going to see the kind of like current world order the current zionist world order is going to to fall away and give a baton pass to the antichrist the system that's going to be set in place uh for you know for it to be ruled with love and light right which you know is 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 we know it's false. It's going to be persecution on a grand scale of Christians that has been since the first century or greater even than that, you know. Um, and the tribulation is going to come come across the world. Now, ultimately, uh, you know, we know that Jesus Christ treads the wine press alone, and he destroys the Antichrist, okay? But, you know, my question is, is I hear a lot of scoffers. You're mentioning, you know, Gen Z. We're millennials. There's a little bit of scoffing coming from this too as well where um I, I one of the biggest thing i hear is is well my grandparents th thought that we were living in the end times or my great great grandparents thought we were living in the end times they thought we were living in the end times during world war ii and everything do you think through all your research of transhumanism the technocracy that it would have first of all i don't think that to be true one and second um do you think that it's it the reason why we are living, if we are the terminal generation and we are living in it now, is because the technology is finally in place right. for these events to occur and to unfold where they couldn't, let's say, a, a 11, they couldn't a 1,000 AD because you wouldn't be able to have a global mark of the beast. You wouldn't be able to have, you know, a, a, an image, uh, you know, of the beast, whether it's AI you like you wouldn't be able to have all these things, which is the reason why it has, has not happened, you know, previously beforehand, and probably will very much likely happen in the near future. Well, I, I definitely still hold out hope because I mean, look at the state of AI. Okay, uh, they have these self-driving cars that will see police lights, the red and blue lights flashing, and they will proceed to crash into the police car. Uh, so I, I'm not holding up any big hopes for AI. I don't have that kind of threat level uh, with it that most people might might equate to it at this point. I, I don't see it being as big of a thing. It's all part of the lie of the promotion of this transhumanist notion of things, in my estimation. AI is never going to become sentient. It's no, I agree with you on that. I'm not a hard AI, hard, hard AI, 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 AI believer, but I do believe that Okay, so I got, let me ask you, since you mentioned that, do you believe that the end times could be a little bit farther off decades because cause it's eventually coming? It's going to happen. Like, it's, it, you know, we will have, you know, the, you know, the foretold events in the book of Revelation, the new heaven and the new earth for believers, you know, the people being judged and cast into hell that are non-believers. Like, that is coming. That, that, that will happen. It's been foretold and it will happen. Now, I'm saying it's probably 
shorter time is going to happen within the next two decades, decade, then longer, okay? But it's a possibility that their technology isn't quite there yet. Is that what you're saying? The technology is not quite, because it's yeah. going to happen. It's going to happen. It's, it's oh, no, to happen. happen. The potential is definitely there, and they are planning for some big stuff to go down, not only by 2030, but by 2049, which is the year in which Ray Kurzweil predicts the singularity will happen. And of course, they, they have high hopes that that could happen sooner, but uh, I, I don't think the technology is quite there yet. I think they're being overly optimistic with their planning of this. So I don't think we're quite there. I think we probably have uh, maybe by the end of the century, uh, something like that, in my estimation. I could be totally wrong. I reserve the right to be totally wrong about Oh, I know. I know you're not saying the say of the Lord. I know you're not. <laughs> I would advise people to live your life as if. Jesus could show up anytime because he certainly can. All the precepts are in place. All the boxes are ticked. There's nothing else that needs to happen on the prophetic timeline for this to come about right now. Uh, let's be honest about it. Uh, I think they lie about the state of technology, but I also do know from my research that the state of technology is actually somewhere bare minimum 30 to 50 years ahead within the auspices of the secret programs of the oh, military. Oh, yes, we have no idea. Um, and it is the public. Go yeah. ahead. I'm... No, I, I was agreeing with you, that's all. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's hard to say what is the true nature of the beast. And, of course, I'll use the term the beast. We just don't know. So, simply, the best thing to do is is live your life in as holy a manner as possible. Get your relationship right with God right now. There's no time to wait. You won't regret it, honestly. Have no regrets. Uh, live in right relation with Jesus Christ. Accept him as Lord and Savior. And he'll help you through it. He'll guide you through. It's as simple as that. And this Amen. is the thing, just to go back to the whole notion with uh, the people involved with the occult again. If you actually go and look at everything involved with all these occult teachings, it's always about gnosis or secret knowledge or mm -hmm. learning this, learning that, going through initiatory rites and passages and all of this stuff. And you have to work towards your salvation and work towards all of this, this promise, this false promise that they give you. And you're never quite good enough. You're never quite there because they'll tell you if you get just far enough, if you're just good enough, if you follow the instructions of your teacher verbatim and you do everything the fraternity wants you to do and you do all of this and you're just right enough and you, you're you just right in your studies, then maybe you'll develop one of these special occult powers like clairvoyance or some such thing. And then you'll be able to see, have your third eye opened and see into other spiritual worlds and, and communicate on the astral plane and all of this stuff. And they make all these grandiose promises. And most people who go through the occult teaching don't ever experience any of that. Or if they do, then I mean, it's, it's, demonic to the core and it's not everything it was cracked up to be or they they get high enough to a level where they claim that they do that without actually doing that and they're known to lie to their lower level members and make these yeah. granny promises so here's the thing so they go through this whole system and they're told you have to do this that and this and that here's the thing salvation through jesus christ is a free gift it's a free gift by the grace of God and not by works, lest any man should boast. And he makes a way for us and he makes it easy for us. We don't have to build our own salvation like the philosophers of fire teach. And that's what they refer to themselves as in these fraternal schools, these secret brotherhoods, the philosophers of fire. They think that they're the sons of Cain. They're the builders. They're the ones that get things done. They can build their own salvation. They don't need to be weak like those of the waters of faith, that's how they refer to us. They don't need a savior. They can be their own savior. They yeah. can build their own way. This is what they believe. This is what they yeah. teach. And it comes at a cost because it's a lie. And they could never quite get there. They can't build their temple the way that they claim. Whereas Jesus Christ offers this free gift. And all you have to do is accept this free gift from him. Accept him as your savior. And it's through his grace. And he said, this will be a stumbling block to these people.
people. And this is a stumbling block to these people because Amen. the foolish things of God are greater than the wisdom of man. And oh, this okay. is that on display, demonstrable. Amen. So you can accept this free gift. You don't have to jump through all the hoops. You don't have to go Amen. through all the initiation rites. You don't have to go through all the degree systems and follow the teacher's instructions and do heinous things that they could hold against you later to get there, to achieve gnosis or illumination or whatever they want to call it. You don't need that for your salvation. It's a free gift. A free gift. It's as simple as that. And you'd be a fool not to accept it, in my view. Amen. Yeah. And it's the only way. It's the only right. way to salvation. These people deluded themselves thinking right. that they can save themselves. And uh, no, we need a savior. And the only savior is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and you're, I mean, you're right, Wayne. I mean, I, I, I can't, I couldn't sum it up better. And, and they think that they, they believe, I mean, that separates, you know, the only two quote unquote religions and the only real one is Bible believing Christianity that we're saved by God's grace through our faith. Let, you know, not of our works, so let no man shall boast. And, you know, the other way is, you know, the other way, which you can't save yourself, it's false, it's a delusion, it ends to destruction. Uh, you know, that path does, which is I don't need a savior. I can save myself and I can save myself by doing these things, which are either what I know, which is which is gnosis. Usually it's a cold, you know, hidden knowledge that you've gained somehow where either by demons or, uh, uh, you know, reading a, you know, sacred text that men have written. Um, you know, it's very complex belief systems. Uh, or by your works, by what I can earn my way into heaven, okay? And both of those are false paths because the only way is by faith. And so that, you know, that's, once you look at it that way and realize that Christianity is different than all other religions on the face of the earth and has always been separate because it is the true religion of God, uh, you know, it, 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 it's it's that, it's that alone, and it's it's crazy as a former New Ager to realize that where I thought the inverse that all roads lead to God, that's simply not true. And they all contradict too. They they all contradict in some form or fashion, but all of them contradict, and all of them badmouth, and all of them hate Bible believing Christianity. Absolutely, they they do, and that's the thing. You you hear an awful lot of vitriol. From people out there over Bible believing Christianity. They call it a book of fairy tales. There would, would they call that? Would they call it, would they say that about the Quran to a Muslim? Would they dare make that no. statement that it's a book of fairy tales? That's yeah. the disrespect that they have in the modern era for Christianity at this point. And Very that's how sense. shut down to the word their mind is. God has given them over to their strong delusion. And that's the sad state of affairs. But I think we can still reach a lot of these people. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not talking, you know, that's not just people that are tied into the occult. That's like just mainstream culture right now has that kind of a stance and viewpoint. Uh, so so yes. it's, it's a sad state of affairs. But eventually what happens is at some point they do realize, hey, there's something more than just this place and they begin delving down those roads and that's how they find many of these false occult beliefs and belief systems and philosophies and things like that. satan's got millions of funnels to funnel them in oh absolutely i mean the 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 the, 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 the narrow path is really narrow and the issue is is not because it's complex to understand it's narrow because it goes against people's carnal beliefs and wants yeah. and they have to you know pick up your cross and follow Jesus Christ daily, and most people right. want to just give in to what they want it's and what they know. Lifestyle. That's the thing. It's yeah. not an easy lifestyle. That's right. And it's it, that's the whole point. It's not an easy lifestyle, but there's the most reward and hope at the very end. Much so. the very much so. Very much so. Wayne, can you tell everybody where to where to, where they can find you, brother? Yeah, man. The Alchemical Tech Revolution podcast is available anywhere you find podcasts now. Uh, that's doing extremely well, and mostly on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. That's where most of my listeners come from. Uh, also, I have a channel over on Rockfin. That's R-O-K-F-I-N dot com backslash Wayne McCroy. You can find my work over there as well. And I have five books out currently. 
I'm working on two more. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't know how far out the timeline is on when those are going to be done. Uh, so just Google my name and you'll find my books as well. Uh, also, I'm over on Substack. I, I, I love Substack. It's growing. Really I'm subscribed. Fast. We're both subscribed to each other's Substacks, brother. That's, that's, You're on YouTube yeah. as well, right? What's that? You're on YouTube as well, right? Oh, yes. I'm also over on YouTube, Alchemical Tech yeah. Revolution channel on YouTube. Don't post an awful lot there because they, they like to censor me. That is true. Uh, yes, they do. <laughs> I would very much like to keep the channel because, sadly enough, it is the biggest platform out there. Yeah. So it's a way to get over where they could actually hear good information. Uh, but, uh, yes, I have that. I have the alchemicalbeacon.substack.com as well. And uh, John, you and I will be speaking at an event in New York City. That's true, yes. Remember, uh, this is going to be Free World NYC, September 9th. Tickets are on sale now. Uh, so that's that's going to be an exciting time. John and on I Eventbrite. Are, yeah, on Eventbrite.com. Uh, I'm sure we'll put links down uh, below the show here. But we'll both be speaking. Guard Goldsmith will be speaking. Um, Don Jeffries, Charlie Robinson, Robinson Jeffrey, Tony Atterburn. Yeah, Charlie Richard Robin, Gage, Richard Gage, nine eleven truth. Uh, so it should be a good time. So uh, and hosted of like and Billy Ray Valentine. Yep, and my presentation is going to be on the externalization of the hierarchy. So that's oh, going that to be extremely be interesting. Yes, and how it plays into uh, current, uh, possibly uh, in times that we are heading into. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting to preach to uh, many people there. Uh, might be one of the first times they hear this perspective uh, with someone preaching the word instead of preaching a great awakening, uh, uh, <laughs> false, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, belief system, which is we're seeing uh, have, have be increasing today. Uh, but definitely thank you for uh, coming on. Is there anything you want to say in clothing, Jeremy, real quick? Yeah, I wanted to ask Wayne if uh, are any of your books on Kindle? Yes. They're all on Kindle. Awesome, awesome. Just I, I wanna I wanna check them out myself, um, and I'm definitely gonna follow your podcast. I've been subscribed to your YouTube, but I'm gonna follow you on Spotify as well. That's so, appreciated, yeah, brother. Was, Much appreciated. Yeah. Oh yeah, we yeah need, for sure. We need to be able to get the word out there, oh, and very much so. That's the uh, whole especially the couple of times of censor censorship we've been having, it's been rough and it's going to continue to get worse. Uh, that is for sure. I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. Um, but you know, for, uh, Jeremy stone, Jeremy Anderson, you too as well, brother, for me, everybody listening, uh, thank you for listening to buy their fruits. We love you all. God bless you all. Um, take care, pray for us, keep us in prayer. Um, and, um, stay uh, close to the Lord and, uh, in his word. Take care, everybody. Pray for God the bless. stones. Yes, very much so. Bye.